My ability to recruit you into stress is much more powerful than my ability to recruit you into empathy for something good. So we're talking about an addiction to entrenched thinking. We're talking about an addiction in neurochemical systems that support my refusal to change. So we have all these barricades to empathy and to really listening. And we have all these support networks in our body and our brain, which are building a bigger and bigger divide. Until we can learn to regulate the self, I don't think we're gonna get where we wanna go as a culture. One of the scientific results that I'm very intrigued by is in the 1960s, a guy named Robert Heath, you couldn't do this experiment nowadays, but skull popped off, electrodes lowered deep into the brain, all over the brain, and people can stimulate wherever they want and they just report what they're mm -hmm. feeling. So they press one lever, they feel drunk. They press another lever, they feel happy. They press another lever, they feel sexually aroused. And they're reporting all this. So the number one brain area that people want to stimulate, they finally hit this lever where they go, oh, I like that. And they just keep hitting that thing and hitting that thing and hitting that thing. Frustration and mild anger. What that told us is it's clearly tapped into the dopamine reward system it feels like a hit of dopamine to them more than anything else. The other thing is an understanding that beliefs and information that supports our prior beliefs also increases the activity of these reward systems. So the more I see stuff that verifies what I already think or feel, that they are bad and they are good, or that we are good and they are bad, the more dopamine and adrenaline is released into my system it actually changes the way I view the world. It means that I'm gonna see certain things and not see others. I'm gonna hear certain things and not hear others. The things that verify my beliefs, are I'm gonna feel rewarded for. The things that are counter to my beliefs, I'm not gonna be as rewarded for. So we have all these barricades to empathy and to really listening and to really hearing what the other side is trying to say. And we have all these support networks in our body and our brain, which are building a bigger and bigger divide. So mm -hmm. the question is, what's the boat that's gonna get us across that divide? And I believe, and I, I'm not just defaulting to this because it's what my lab works on, but I fundamentally believe that the boat that's gonna get us to the other side is our ability to control our internal state, to be able to ratchet down our level of autonomic arousal just enough so that I can dilate not just my vision of what's happening in my immediate environment, but I can dilate my cognition, my thinking, to the possibility that there may be a kernel of value in what somebody else is saying, even if it's about me and I don't like what I'm hearing. Now, for, as somebody who spent time in the addiction treatment community, you, you probably know this is a lot of what you get good at as mm. you learn to move through something that to you feels very good and you know all the reasons why it would probably be good to change it, but you know what, you don't want to because it feels so good. So we're talking about an addiction to entrenched thinking. We're talking about an addiction in neurochemical systems that support lack of change, my refusal to change and stubbornness. And I actually think just like in, for the treatment of addiction and trauma, the key is to get people to learn to tolerate progressively higher levels of stress and maintain dilation of sensory experience, of thought experience. There are circuits in the brain that control emotional contagion. And those are what's powerful. My ability to recruit you into stress is much more powerful than my ability to recruit you into empathy for something good. That's a well-established neurobiological fact. We need to increase our level of understanding, at least our level of discourse, so that we can hear other, really hear other people's ideas, even though we don't like the way it feels and we love the way that we feel. This is what that result said. We love the way we feel. We don't like the way other people feel. The first thing is to bring the level of urgency that we feel internally down. We need to learn to calm ourselves in order to really have the information start to come in. Now the system right now and people out there, everyone's in a frenzy. And you can see it, our collect, the collective conscience is, is kind of losing its mind. It's kind of out of its mind. We need to learn how to turn off those amygdala circuits. So are we all gonna get together and do EMDR? Probably not. Are we all gonna get together and do breathing exercises? Probably not, not at scale. What we need to do is start to figure out how we can, I think, especially for the next generation of kids, how to teach them to regulate their nervous system so that they recognize that pulse of adrenaline as placing them in a compromised position 
Like we have to leverage the idea that being able to hear and listen hinges on the ability to be calm. So therefore the ability to be calm is crucial to hearing and listening and hearing and listening is crucial to our advancement as individuals and as groups. The problem is everyone's been trying to do this backwards. They've said, we all have to get along. We have to cancel, cancel culture. We all have to, you know, listen to one another. And I think, again, we have to start from the inside. We have to teach it physiologically. Now, I don't have a master plan on how to do that, but one of the reasons I'm here and one of the reasons I'm, you know, teaching neuroscience on Instagram and not just in my laboratory is until we can learn to regulate the self, I don't think we're gonna get where we wanna go mm -hmm. as a culture. Mm -hmm. I think it really does start with our in, own individual ability to, to do that. And everyone's gotta find that process for themselves. And whether or not you have a perfect family or whether or not you consider yourself the most inclusive and accepting person in the world or not, everyone needs to learn how to do that for themselves. And everyone thinks we do it pretty well, but I think it's clear that none of us do it well yeah. enough. And until we do that, I think our species is gonna continue to go around this merry-go-round yeah. where every 50 or 100 years, we crash right up mm -hmm. against the same general set of issues. Only now social media has made it slightly more or a lot more complicated.